What are the potential errors when running an ABG? There are several factors that can affect the results of an ABG test. Let's talk about them now. Drawing the blood sample from the incorrect patient. Obviously, this can significantly alter the course of treatment of a critical patient. This can be caused by posting the ABG results on the incorrect patient record or mislabeling the blood sample. Obtaining a blood sample from a vein instead of an artery. In some cases, inexperienced healthcare providers might stick the vein instead of the artery. In this case, the sample will be filled with venous blood instead of arterial blood, which will show vastly different results blood clotting. It is highly recommended to analyze the blood sample 10 minutes after extraction in order to avoid clotting. Analyzing a blood sample that has already clotted will yield inaccurate results and will basically render the specimen useless. Obtaining a blood sample on incorrect settings or support. This can significantly affect the course of the treatment of the patient and the medical team's assessment of the patient's needs. For instance, if a blood sample was obtained when the patient is still on supplemental oxygen instead of room air, the results can be misleading and can yield falsely elevated PaO2 levels. Air contamination of the blood sample. Air contamination can alter the results of an ABG sample by causing the measured PaO2 to read inaccurately. Contamination caused by too much heparin. Too much liquid heparin dilutes the blood sample and causes changes in pH levels and can significantly affect the oxygen and carbon dioxide values. Inappropriate mixing of the blood sample. Depending on hospital or laboratory protocols, healthcare providers thoroughly mix the blood sample with heparin immediately upon collection in order to avoid clotting. It's also remixed before it goes into the analyzer. The best way to mix the sample is to roll it between your palms. The most common error that healthcare providers commit when mixing the blood sample is vigorously shaking the vial or container. Another error is not mixing iced samples for a long enough amount of time. It is recommended to mix iced samples longer in order to promote mobilization and mixing of all the components of the blood sample. And the final potential error that may occur is prolonged delays in blood sample analysis. The blood sample must be sent to the laboratory for analysis no longer than 10 to 15 minutes after the blood was drawn. Any delay in blood sample analysis causes changes in the PaO2 and PaCO2 levels due to continuous red blood cell metabolism.